Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a tutorial and it's going to be based on the Fergie Wet n Wild um, newer palette that came out probably not too long ago. Um, she has two. One is in the gold tones or warm neutral tones and this is more like of a smoky um, silver tone kind of dark colors and I want to do a tutorial on that. I haven't practiced it. Usually I try to see how it comes out and then kind of do it for you guys. I'm going to wing it because I have a lot of faith in this palette and we're going to see how it goes and I hope you like it. Um, I'm going to try to do this tutorial in bilingual because a lot of times I do my separate Spanish ones and my English um, videos all on the same channel because I didn't want two channels. I just wanted to be who I am, bilingual, Puerto Rican, and satisfy my amazing Spanish um, viewers like I wanted to do my English viewers. And uh, most of the time I can do separate, but there's some times that I can't do it separate because I can't, like if I do a haul, I can't reopen the packages. I can't like start all over. Once they're open, once it's done, it's done. So I have to pretty much do those in um, bilingual or just do two different ones with different hauls and the tutorials are going to kind of be like that because I can't be retaking off the makeup and redoing it again all in one day so I mean there might be times where I can do it separate but most of the time I'm going to try to do it in bilingual that way both my viewers can get the look and I don't have to redo it all over and over and over again. So I hope you understand both my English and Spanish viewers. Um, so anyway, let's get started. I've already prepped my face. I already have my foundation, my powder, my blush, my eyebrows done because there's already a video on how I do my daily makeup routine. So you already know how that goes. My hair is done. Everything's pretty done. So I'm just going to focus on the tutorial, which is based on the eyeshadow. So I'm going to start by putting the base um, on my entire lid and I'm going to use the lighter color here and this is a shimmery palette which you all know by now I love shimmery so I'm just going to apply that on the entire palette especially under the um, eyebrow to give it more definition to the eyebrow and then I'm just going to make sure it gets all over Going, making sure I go to the corners where is my starting base for the entire rest of the lid which is the crease and then of course the bottom eyelid so making sure that's covered I always like to use a neutral beige tone for my base if it's a beautiful um, light pink or pearl white I can use that try to stay away from right because as I mentioned in a video when you take pictures or on video it just kind of like stands out like a ghost and it takes away from the look of the makeup so unless it's a specific white and I'm doing a specific look I'll go towards white but other than that I like to stay in a light neutral tones light pink tones whatever it is that's light like a base neutral color this is kind of like a beige with shimmer so I'm going to do the other eyebrow, making sure I work real well under the eyebrow. I have big eyebrows, so I have a lot of space to cover. And it's hard to do it when you don't have a mirror and you're using the camera as a mirror. It's a little hard. You don't really get the very detail of how it's looking, but you pretty no much know how to put on your makeup and, and stuff like that. So you're pretty much confident. So I'm making sure I go under that eyebrow and I will look into the mirror just to make sure everything's all good before I proceed further with the color of the eyeshadow palette. I was so excited to buy these palettes. I have um, five pan palettes by Fergie that I've had and then I got new ones that I'm going to do tutorials on those as well. But I got the both big palettes that she came out with. I'm excited to try it. They're very shimmery, um, very pretty. And you could get the look of a smoky as well as a warm neutral palette. So I'm just going to check with my mirror real quick, making sure that it looks good. So I covered the base. And so now I'm thinking I have black and silver on today. There's different black colors here. So I'm going to try to go with the more shimmery color which will probably be um, this one right here. They don't have names on it like you normally get with your um, Naked 1, 2, and 3 that has names for it. So that would have been helpful. 
but it's just one of the medium lighter ones and I'm going to put this outer crease going into my crease black is really a strong color so you have to really blend in this color when you're ready but I'm working from my way out of the crease to the bottom lid going in towards the middle and the corner of the inner eye kind of looks really strong now because not only is black a strong color but it needs to be blended in so again going instead of going to the inner corner which I pretty much got real good I'm gonna make sure that I'm going a little bit higher in the crease towards the inner corner kind of going back the other way and checking back on the bottom lid so I think that's enough for the black on that eye looks like I got a little bit here which is not good because I have to clean it but you try to blow it off and get as much of the looseness of the eyeshadow powder as much as you can but there's always still some that falls so working my way from the outer corner down towards the bottom eyelid going back into the crease towards the inner corner of the eye and just keep going back and forth until you get enough coverage I have to really blow it good because just the shaking off this is not something you want to do on your clients you don't want to blow your your air your breath on their brush that you're going to use on them it's not sanitation but this is my own personal brush I'm doing it on my personal eye I know the health that I'm in so of course I will disinfect my brushes for my next use but it's the best way to get any loose powder out so that it doesn't fall on the rest of my face so it's kind of that and I noticed that that side is a little bit higher so I'm gonna go a little bit higher with this one just to even it out still looks a little low <sighs> okay and so then I'm gonna try to fix this before it goes any further I usually do it on the opposite side of my sponge just to dust it off sometimes it'll still spread so you have to kind of move the sponge around and if necessary of course you have your q-tips which can really get in there and remove any looseness that you have and then you want to go over with some powder or concealer or whatever works best for you in this case I still have some foundation on my sponge so it's going to go over and make sure it's cover it nice and smoothly again okay so then we're gonna go into this really pretty there's two purples actually there's four purples four blacks and then a light pink and a darker pink color so I'm gonna go into this third I'm sorry I'm on the this third color right here and so that's gonna be on my lid just dropped my water bottle I love water I drink water all day it's so good for you I've been that way since I've been a kid so I just dropped it uh. so this is gonna go on the bottom lid it's a that purple that I just showed you I'm gonna get that inner corner I don't know if you can see or get to appreciate the bottom lid the purple of it kind of looks similar in the camera to the black so I'm gonna check in with my mirror again you can definitely see the purple it looks so good with the black I really hope you guys can see it on camera <sighs> going to the lid 
making sure we cover that even going over the corner that you got with the black you can go over that corner because you already established a foundation of that color in the corner so you can go over it with your different color that you're doing on your lid you can go over it a little bit that even makes it blend a little bit together so it's not like a harsh line there remember to go into the corner blending in there and this purple can go up into the black it creates a blending effect versus a harsh I'm separate from you kind of line you want to go over it again these colors are very pigmented, so I'm not going to have to go over it several times, two or three at the most, not even three, because one could have been fine, but I have a habit, the OCD thing kicks in, that at least two has to be my confirmation. So then now that I got that color, going to check in with my mirror real quick. Love it, love it. Oh my God, I love it so much. Um, I'm going to go in with the brush and blend which I'm going to use this brush right here. It's a double brush. Um, these are one of the new brushes that I got. And I'm going to go in and blend with that color that I used under the eyebrow, which is this first color right here, the lighter color of the palette. And I'm going to go in and blend, going into the crease color, lifting it up a, a little bit, and then just staying right in there. Yeah, it looks good. You know, I see it in the camera and I'm like, it doesn't look good. But when I see it in my mirror, it looks very good. So going back up in the eyebrow where I originally had it underneath the eyebrow, going in to that corner because I want to make sure that corner is well blended as well. Kind of right here is like the hardest part to blend. So you have to circle of motion that one god it really looks good and I see in the camera and it might not look good to you guys but trust me it looks good so again lifting it up just a little bit because you don't want to go straight down because you want it to be blended you don't want to take away because when you go straight into the color, you're starting to take away when you blend. You want to go up a little bit and then blend side to side. So I'm lifting up the color, blending it that way, but making sure I'm not taking from the color. And then I'm going side to side. Going under that eyebrow, just giving it some extra coverage where you originally started from. Oh my god. It looks so good. Doesn't look as good in the camera, which is like... <sighs> but as long as it's good... And I'm trying to lift up a little bit more. Going back over here, trying to blend it. It looks so good in the blending part. But it's like to me, the camera it doesn't look good. But I'm hoping you guys are seeing it just like I am. And then you could take a Q-tip, kind of make sure it hasn't passed your eyebrow. You don't want to go, to go past your eyebrow. You can even lick it a little bit just to make sure you... Thing. it just looks so good oh my god I hope you guys are seeing this um, I'm gonna go back in with the um, the black it's 
kind of blending it backwards now kind of having to put a little bit more just to lift it up a little bit then blending it a little bit just slightly That's what I mean. Black is a is a very strong color, so blending is a little bit harder. So I'm hoping you're kind of capturing what I'm going for here. So being that black is a strong color, you almost have to blend it in swirl motions. Almost really going into the color. and then swaying back and forth. God, that is like perfection, I swear to you. And then retouching it with the under the eyebrow color, just a slight blend into there. And then you could even kind of go around here, making sure that that line on the corner is not harsh. See how it kind of blends in there. You kind of have to do a little swirl motion here as well. So, I'm going to kind of um, go in there, it's right here, and put this lighter pink in here to kind of give it a dimension effect. So, I'm going to put that in the corner going towards the outer crease. And then I could even go into the crease to give it like a 3D or dimension effect, which is working perfectly. Sometimes a lighter color, when you're using a strong color, sometimes a lighter color gives it a better blend than the very light color you have on your base. You always want to blend it into your base, of course, that has to be number one. But sometimes you have to go back in there and get a lighter color than what's on the crease and the lid and kind of use that to give it that dimension look, but also helping to blend it as well because you have one strong color against a, the very lightest color and then you're trying to blend it together, which you need to do that and it works. But sometimes because of those strong colors, you have to go in with a little lighter barely lighter than the dark color that you use in the crease in the eyelid and use that as a blending motion at the same time giving it some definition I hope I explain myself so I'm just gonna do it one more time because it's working just perfectly the blending looks a lot smoother a whole lot smoother a lot even 
I love this palette. She did such an amazing job. Okay. So then you can even go into that last line, outer line of the blending where the crease is. Kind of do the blending motion up there, giving it that final look where you can see that line pretty much is faded out. You look into my mirror. Oh my God, amazing, amazing. Um, I'm going to go in. And this is where I'm going to put a little bit concealer. So I'm using, um, I believe the letters have come off of here. This is like a Maybelline. Just going to put a little couple of dots there. Just because I don't want to really go over it with the foundation. Just enough, just whatever is left on my sponge from the foundation is good. I don't want to dip it into the bottle of foundation. And that's what your concealer is for. Kind of use my Q-tips. Q-tips are so key when it comes to correcting makeup because it's able to get in those corners. It cleans it. Okay. Then I'm going to go over a little bit with my foundation because I had to do the concealer and it kind of went in to the foundation. I want to make sure my foundation is still defined. Then what I'm going to take is I'm going to take this very flat corner brush. This is by e.l.f. And I'm going to use one of the colors as well on this palette as my eyeliner. And I'm probably going to take that um, very dark purple right here and use that as my eyeliner so it matches my foundation. So you just dig into, you don't want to lay in flat because you're not applying it like shadow. You want to just dig into it with a very flat corner and then just go and apply your eyeliner like if you would any other eyeliner then you want to go back the other way then you want to do the other side And again, uh, I got a little bit on my side of my nose. That's what your Q-tip is for. Clean those little things that happen. So I've established my eyeliner. Let me look in my mirror, make sure. I'm going to go over it a little bit more. Kind of give it that confirmation. Okay. So you pretty much use the entire palette. Now I'm just going to finish it up with my um, mascara. So it's kind of a and I'm going to use my mirror for this. Kind of that dark purple and black look, smoky look. And the mascara that I'm using as my base mascara, because I always have to put two or three different ones, because I don't have long eyelashes. So in order to make my, eyel my eyelashes have volume and length, I have to use two or three. In this case, I like to use this one as my base, which is the um, the telesc the L'Oreal Telescopic. You can see that. 
I use it as my base because the brush, as you can see, is very thin and it's good for um, getting to the root of the eyelashes and elongating them. Getting those corner hairs out that are hard to get when you have very short eyelashes. And then it just gets to that root and pulls those hairs out to make it look long. So I love using this one as my base. And just kind of going back and forth, making sure all my eyelashes are as out as much as possible. And doing the same with the bottom. I was hoping that this video, there it goes, that. Doing the same with the bottom, but God, the wind is so strong. Can you hear my door shaking? It is a hot day. It's 90 degrees in my town, but it's come with a lot of wind, which I don't understand. It's very sunny. 90 is very hot, pretty much, but this hot weather has come with a lot of heavy wind because I could hear it in the trees outside and I could hear it shaking my door. Do you hear that? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> worse than I might have left the I was thinking of leaving the fan on because it's really hot and I did that in one video by accident I forgot to turn my fan off and I wasn't even close to the fan and you could hear the fan in most of the video which wasn't horribly bad but I just would have liked it better if I had remembered to turn it off even though it was hot as heck but I didn't and I thought, okay, not too bad. I can hear it, but it's not as bad as I thought it was going to come out. And I asked my daughters, what do you guys think? And they're like, it's not bad. You know, you can still hear you and the video sounds good. So, but every time after that, I remembered that no matter how hot it is, I'm shutting my fan off. So again, I'm just creating my base, lengthening with the telescopic mascara. Creating just swaying back and forth with the bottom hairs and then pulling out. When you have short eyelashes, you have to find them, so you have to point the mascara brush, sway it back and forth, and then pull out. So now I'm going to go in with my top coat brush mascara, which I'm using the um, Rimmel Scandal Eyes. It has a very funny looking brush, but it really helps to make my lashes look have volume and lengthening until I find that miracle mascara that does it in one slop and makes me have that miracle I hate when I do that by accident I'm gonna fix it with foundation um, mascara that does it in one slot makes that miracle length and volume on my eyelashes where I'm gonna jump for joy until then this is what helps I hope you can see that, that my eyelashes are getting longer. Again, swaying with the point. Doing the other side. Gotta hurry up. My camera is about to shut off. I don't want to do a two part. One thing I hate is to do a two part. Sometimes it's absolutely necessary to do a two or three part, but it's not something that we intend to do. It's just like annoying because you want to just do it all in one slot and not have to make your viewers watch two or three parts. When it does happen, trust me, that was not our intention. And it's just necessary to get to show you the full look of what we were doing or the full message reviews or whatever that we were doing it's necessary to do two and three parts because we have to convey the complete video of whatever we're talking about and um, so it's necessary but just know that it's never our intention we try to do it in one slot so we don't take 
much of your time and get it all done. Then I'm going to do this Pucker Up lipstick by Rue 21. It's like a burgundy color. Kind of has a I like that burgundy color, but I'm going to top it with this purple since purple on my uh, is on my eyes. Makes it look really nice. So, sorry, had to pause for a second because I want to give you the full look of what my look is going to be like with my earrings. I'm wearing these guests silver hoop, not hoop earrings, but because they're the ones you pull in. They're not actually hoops, but the style of the roundness is hoops. And it says guess. I thought these would go good because I have purple little metal things on my shirt. And it just goes good with the black and purple. So anyway, that is the Fergie um, palette. It's the Center Stage Collection. And it's your smoky... Um, palette which is let me make sure the camera she also has a neutral warm tone one which I'm excited to do a tutorial on that one I forgot to speak in Spanish I am so sorry so I'm gonna have to do a Spanish one separate oh my god I can't believe that I really got into it but this is her center stage palette collection I love it it's the mix of um, purples and blacks and I just thought it was a perfect look this might be something I could use for a gala galaxy look so anyway i wanted to do a tutorial on this palette i really hope you liked it and enjoyed this video and i really hope you captured the look um and if you tried it before you can leave comments be below and let me know what you thought of it um i love it i think it's shimmery which i love i think it was very pigmented i think the look came out amazing on me and like i said I just wanted to share that tutorial with you. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Please don't forget to subscribe. I cannot talk because I'm rushing. I have to take my daughter to her exercise class. But um, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. That would mean a lot to me and it would give you heads up on all my future videos and all the ones I have already. So again, I really hope you enjoyed it. Until my next video, thanks for watching. Take care.